So uh, before we get into the more complicated calculations related to heating different materials and th the calculations that are more complicated than just the specific heat calculations that we did on the previous slides, I want to describe uh, what's called a heating curve. And a sample heating curve is shown here. So this is just one large chart called a heating curve. So what I want you to imagine is that you have ice. You have some ice here and the temperature of the ice is very cold. It's minus 20 degrees Celsius. Um, remember back from earlier in this unit, uh, ice melts and freezes or water melts and freezes at zero degrees Celsius and water boils or condenses from vapor at 100 degrees Celsius. But right now we have ice that's very cold and on the y-axis here we're showing the temperature of the ice or the water or whatever it may be. In this case right at the beginning it's it's ice because it's below zero degrees Celsius. It's very cold ice that's minus 20 degrees Celsius. And on the x-axis here we have the amount of heat or the amount of energy that we have added to our ice. So imagine that we add a certain amount of heat or energy to our ice and our ice gets warmer. It goes from minus 20 degrees Celsius and it gets warmer and warmer and warmer until it reaches zero degrees Celsius. So as we add heat or energy to the ice, it gets warmer. But it's still ice. It's still solid. And then something strange happens right at the melting temperature. If you continue to add heat or energy to your warmer ice, it's still ice. If you continue to add heat or energy here, the temperature doesn't change. The temperature stays flat for a while. And what's actually happening to your very warm ice is it's being converted into water. It's melting. So over here, as you're adding energy, the temperature doesn't change. All of the energy and all of the heat is used to actually melt the ice, to break the, the attachments that are made uh, between the ice molecules when they're frozen and turn them into water. Once you have melted all of the ice and you continue to add energy, then you have very cold water. So over here we have very cold water, and if we continue to add energy, then our very cold water begins to increase in temperature. Our water gets warmer and warmer and warmer. And if we continue to add heat or energy to our very cold water, it will get warmer until we reach the boiling point. And then at this point, if we continue to add heat or energy to our very hot water, the temperature doesn't change again. It stays flat for a while as we continue to add heat or energy. And then what happens is all of this heat or energy that's being used that is not changing the temperature is actually being used to convert the, the liquid water into steam. And once the liquid water has been entirely converted into steam, then we have steam at 100 degrees Celsius over here. And if you continue to add heat or energy, the steam will rise in temperature. So what I want you to realize about, about this curve here, this red line here, is that there are areas that are flat over here and over here. And what that means is the temperature doesn't change on those flat parts because all of the energy that's being added is either being used to melt the ice or to convert the uh, very hot water into steam. And these, uh, these diagonal lines here are when heat or energy is actually being used to increase the temperature of the material. The diagonal lines here, here, and here are the areas where you can use the specific heat calculations uh, that we discussed in the previous video. The, the specific heat calculations will work if the temperature, uh, if the heat or energy is being used to raise the temperature. Where they don't work is on these flat lines, when the heat or energy is either being used to melt the material or is being used to, to uh, convert the material into a gas. And so I want to talk about those flat lines in more detail now. So the first thing I want to talk about here um, is this first flat line here, which is related to um, the melting of a material. In this case, we're talking about the melting of water, but it could be the melting of, of any material. Um, so let's talk about that now. The, the melting of material is related to something called the heat of fusion. And again, I, I want to do a little thought exercise with you here. Imagine that we have a certain amount of ice and we have our ready-made candles that come from our factory and it takes one candle, it takes the burning of one candle to melt all of this ice. And let's pretend this ice is just about to melt. 
and, we, and it will take the burning of one candle to melt it all completely and turn it into very cold water. Well, if we have twice as much ice, then I hope you will agree that it will take twice as many candles. It will take two candles to melt twice as much ice that's just about to melt. This concept that it will take twice as much uh, heat or twice as much energy to melt twice as much of something that is about to melt is called the heat of fusion. Um, and more formally, heat of fusion is this. It, it, is basically, it basically allows you to answer the question, how much heat or energy do I have to add to one gram of a solid that's about to melt in order to melt it? Or the other way around, how much heat or energy do I have to remove from one gram of a liquid that is about to freeze in order to completely freeze that one gram? And the idea is that you can actually figure out how much heat or energy it takes to melt or freeze one gram of something. And people do this, people have done this for a number of different materials. I don't expect you to memorize these numbers, but I expect you to be able to use them on a quiz or a test. As an example, the heat of fusion of water is 80 calories per gram of water. That means if you have one gram of ice that's just about to melt, it will cost you 80 calories of heat to melt it all. If you have two grams of ice that are about to melt, it will cost you twice as much. And you can do any type of calculation related to that um, using this information here. So the sample heat of fusion question is this. You have 26 grams of ice cubes at zero degrees Celsius. In other words, the ice is just about to melt. You add those ice cubes to your Coca-Cola. How much heat or energy is needed to melt all of the ice? What happens to the temperature of your Coca-Cola and why? And the information that we need to know is that the heat of fusion of water is 80 calories for every gram of water. So we can use this information and set up a relationship. We know that if we have one gram of ice that's about to melt, it will cost us 80 calories of energy to melt it. But we don't have one gram of ice that's about to melt. We actually have 26 grams. So we write an equivalent fraction over to the right. We say 80 calories for every 1 gram is equal to x calories for every 26 grams. And we want to find out what x is. The way to do that is to cross multiply. So we do 80 times 26 is equal to 1 gram times x calories. And that's written here. 80 times 26 is equal to 1 gram times x calories. And we want to get x all by itself. So what we need to do is divide by 1 gram. And if we do that, then again, we can see that the grams cancel out. Grams on top, grams on the bottom will cancel out. And the answer will be 80 times 26 divided by 1 is equal to x calories. And that turns out to be 2,080 calories. And if we want to write it with the correct number of significant digits, we need two significant digits. And so we would round up to 2,100 calories. So there's our answer to the first question. The other question is what happens to the temperature of your Coca-Cola? Well, if you think about this, this is basically saying that it will take 2,100 calories of heat or energy to melt our 26 grams of ice cubes. Well, where is that heat or energy going to come from? It's going to come from the Coca-Cola that's surrounding the ice cubes. So if the Coca-Cola is giving up 2,100 calories to melt the ice, then the Coca-Cola is going to lose those calories. It's going to lose that heat, and the Coca-Cola will actually get colder. So that's essentially that, that's a, a chemistry version of why your Coca-Cola gets colder when you put ice in it. The reason is that some of the energy from your Coca-Cola is being used to melt the ice. And because of that, your Coke gets colder. The other concept uh, that is related to heat of fusion is called heat of vaporization. And this deals with the second flat line of the heating curve that we discussed a few, few lines back. And again, a very similar thought experiment. Imagine that I have water here that is very hot. It's about to boil away. And let's pretend that it takes the burning of one candle to, to vaporize or to boil away all of this uh, very hot water. Well, if we have twice as much water that is about to boil away, then it will cost us twice as many candles worth of energy to boil it all away. And this concept that you can figure out how much heat or how much energy it takes to boil away a liquid into, into a gas is called heat of vaporization. And again, more formally, what heat of vaporization uh, answers is 
how much heat or energy do I have to add to one gram of a liquid that's about to boil away in order to turn it into a gas, or you could say in order to vaporize it, which is why it's called heat of vaporization. And conversely, it can also answer the question, how much heat or energy do I have to remove from one gram of a gas that is about to condense in order to turn it back into a liquid? And this you can also figure out by heat of vaporization. And again, different materials that can be boiled away have different heats of vaporization. Water has a certain heat of vaporization. Aluminum has a different heat of vaporization. Just different materials have different heats of vaporization. And I don't, again, I don't expect you to know what those are, but I expect you to be able to use them in a quiz or a test question. So just as an example, the heat of vaporization for water is 540 calories for every one gram of water. What that means is if you have one gram of water that is very hot, that's about to boil away, it will cost you 540 calories to burn to boil away that entire gram. If you have twice as much water that's about to boil away, then it will cost you twice as many calories. The calculations are essentially identical to the ones that you use for heat of fusion. So we won't do uh, another sample problem here.